started out in, uh, where did we start out? Where? Madison. Well, I know we left Madison, North Carolina. On Thursday afternoon, went to Tulsa for Friday and then uh, Texas last night and a long drive back here tonight. And then we're going home for a few days. And uh, I know you saw the, the video with Miss Connie and she wishes so much that she could be here. But you know what? That lady has come too far to turn back now. She's had a lot of health issues and maybe Dean will share that with you. But what a privilege to have her as a mother-in-law. She lives exactly what she sings. The same lady day in and day out. And I love her very much. So honored to have her um, as a part of my family. It's been a wonderful weekend, a wonderful trip. The Lord has been good to us. And uh, that video that you saw, I mean, Dean was telling you that our, our oldest here was born after we'd gone to Israel. And then the video that you saw of us in Israel, um, that was in 2004. And I was five months expecting our youngest daughter. So they won't ever let me go back to Israel again. <laughs> I'm too old anyway, it doesn't matter. But, <laughs> but we had our, our youngest and she's now 18. And I'm telling you, y'all, if she'd have been first, she'd have been last. Um, she is a precious, precious sweet girl. But now she, she's been a little rowdy all through her life. Um, Dean was paying for his raising for a lot of years from that little girl because she was hyper and always happy, always into something. Um, she would pull the fire alarms at the church and the fire department would come. I mean, it was always something with her. And then when she was nine years old, the doctor thought she was ADHD and she was not. And they gave her some medication and all of a sudden she went from this happy little wild child to this kid that wouldn't talk. She would sit at the dinner table and the breakfast table and never say a word. She'd go to her room and sit in the corner. She wouldn't play. She got to where she wouldn't eat. She weighed 50 pounds the whole year that she was nine years old. Her anxiety and her depression got so bad that so many nights she would say, Mama, I don't want to live like this. And then it went into self-harming. She never wanted to take her life, but she would say, I'm punishing myself for when I misbehaved. And I sure don't want to ever go back to that time, but we went through seven years of that. And a lady recommended that we take her to a place in Atlanta who does these brain scans. And we did that and they looked at her brain and she was born nine and a half weeks early. Now everything we thought had developed like it should, her kidneys, her lungs. But what did not develop properly was the emotional part of her brain. And the doctor said, I don't know why that child survives from day to day. But he said, we can help her. We know what to do now. And tonight, she's an 18-year-old that's happy and healthy. She's starting her senior year of high school. She's been accepted to college. She's got a boyfriend. Not happy about that. <laughs> But he's very good to her. We like him a lot. But she's happy and healthy. She got a second chance at life. This sweet man back here I've been married to had a series of 10 strokes over a matter of six months period. He has a stent in his brain now, and I want to ask you to pray for him. We're getting ready to go in. They've got to put a second stent in. Just found out this past week. We're going to do that in the next couple of weeks. He's had a second chance at life with 10 strokes. He shouldn't be here. But God was faithful. Faithful to our prayers. I think about David in the Bible and what he did. But God loved him so much, he gave him a second chance. How many chances have you had? I've had a bunch.